and down the country, pets are humiliating owners who are often too ashamed to tell anyone. The Pet Shame Clinic has been helping those at the end of their tether with embarrassing pet problems. In South London, Dylan, the anxious Dalmatian, isn't just shy, he's a nervous wreck. And his bad behaviour has been giving owner Tristan a headache. Vet Mark diagnosed behavioural problems and today is paying Dylan and Tristan a home visit. With him is specialist dog behaviourist Dr Roger Mugford. Oh, yeah. With strangers in the house, Dylan reverts to his usual nervous behaviour. So, Tristan, what do you do to Dylan to try and calm him down? Uh, I try and stroke him and just keep him quiet and put him in his bed, but normally I end up having to go out with my friends. On the face of it, Dylan is an extremely distressed and unhappy dog, but actually I think he's working to a plan, a fiendish canine plan, which is to get more and more and more of Tristan's attention. And a lot of dogs use this technique, and so basically the manipulative psychologist is the dog and the victim is the owner. I think we have a case of a bit of fakery, uh, and indeed we've got to find a way that's simple and easy for Tristan to, to operate to change Dylan's behaviour. Roger's diagnosis means that Tristan needs to be more confident and keep a check on this fakery. Oh, yes, I'm a pretender. A front control harness is the tool that will enable Tristan to take charge of Dylan. So, hey, will he take a treat from me, I wonder? Using treats to tempt him, Roger teaches Dylan to trust him, leaving Tristan out of the equation. Oh, yes. That's a really positive indication, you know. Could you step away yeah. or step towards me? Yeah. And then you remove that security blanket yeah. which you have become for him because I want him to relate to Mark and to myself, strangers, uh, as uh, suitable subjects for trust. Mark, treat for him. Dylan. Now, that is actually quite a confident act by Dylan, wasn't it? So, would you walk around us in a big yeah. circle? Thank you. Dylan, good boy, good boy. Good. So, Interestingly, he's not made a dash for you, which I thought he would. He hasn't. He stayed with Mark and me. It's a big success, really. With things going well, Roger wants to take it up a notch by taking Dylan out and about. The big test is how he'll cope when he's handed over to an unsuspecting stranger. Fantastic. Come on, Dylan. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, that's good. That's good. It's called Dylan. You're a star. I'll give you some treats to give to actually yeah. him. Here's, here's a treat. Oh, perhaps not. Perhaps not. Oh, poor Dylan's losing his nerve. Oh, love him. And don't worry, don't worry. Oh, that was all a bit, bit much for a chap. Let's let's walk up again. Yeah. But Roger's not giving up that easily. Hey, that's good. That's good. It may look like one step forward and two back, but on the second attempt, Dylan's more relaxed. Do we expect this sort of progress? I'm very optimistic of a positive outcome for this dog, but he's on the way towards having a fully settled urban dog, which is a pleasure to have and, and not a, a nuisance to other people. He's still room for improvement, but it'd be good to see him doing it more regularly and without being like forced into it, it'd be nice. Dylan has a long way to go, but he's making progress. When he returns to see us at the clinic in less than one month's time, I wonder if his confidence will be boosted. <laughs> Julian Hopkinson has had four-year-old bull mastiff Lulu since birth. He breeds mastiffs and also has Lulu's mother and her sister. But Lulu has a special place in Julian's heart. Oh, she's exceptional. She's so happy. She's a treasure to be with. She will follow me to the end of the earth. She thinks she's human. She wants to be with you all the time. She's not a dog, she's a human. I love my dog as much as I love you. Lulu looks like a top dog, 
So just what is her problem? Lulu goes to stud, she goes to see her boyfriend. She falls pregnant, we know she conceives, but halfway through the pregnancy, she loses the pups. And she's done that the last two times that she's, she's been to stud. As a conscientious dog breeder, Julian is keen to carry on the bloodline he's established over the past six years. You want your own children. I want my own children. Lulu wants her own children. It's like a whole family chain that you need to keep going. It's naturally in dogs to breed. And when you have something special like Lulu, I want a puppy out of Lulu. That's what I want. I wanna have your baby. It's time for Lulu to check in at the Pet Shame Clinic. And you have um, other dogs? Yes, I've got her mother and I've got her auntie. Wow. And is she great with them? Perfect. They all run together. Mm -hmm. They sleep together. They do everything together. Yeah. And what's she like with their pups? Gosh, wonderful. Yeah. She's so beautiful. Oh, it'd be lovely if she could have pups. Will Vet Mark be able to see through Lulu's problem pregnancies? We'll give her a quick check over if she's going to let us. Yes, she'll let him. Good girl, Lulu. Show your teeth. That's it. Wow, look at the size of her mouth. So she's got good colour of her mucous membranes or her gums. Her eyes are nice and clear. I mean, she looks like a perfectly normal, healthy dog. So she, how far does she get with the pregnancy? Um, she, she goes for the scan, four and five, fine. Six and seven, they start to grey out. And how many times has this happened? This has happened twice now. And I'm, I'm assuming it's a tried and tested stud dog. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. OK, so the problem sounds like being it with her. It is with Lulu, yeah. And why is it so important to, to have puppies from Lulu? She'd love to be a mother. She's actually bought up a Gloucester Old Spot piglet. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So she has lactated before? Yes. She was lactating two weeks ago. Phantom pregnancy. Yep, yep. As well as her pregnancies terminating suddenly, Lulu has been experiencing phantom pregnancies. This natural phenomenon is commonly thought to date from the days of when dogs lived in packs. All bitches in the pack would come into season together, even though only the dominant bitch would mate. This alpha female's pups would then be cared for and suckled by the rest of the females in the pack. Will Vet Mark be able to get to the bottom of why Lulu's pregnancies cut short? So for bitches not to carry a pregnancy full term, there's some sort of categories that sort of falls into. First, see if there's a problem with either her or the foetus. The uterus environment is so sensitive, like it is in all species, to any tiny changes at all. Sometimes other females, if they don't get on, can cause enough stress to not make them carry a pregnancy full term. And obviously we've got the infectious causes as well. We need to try and pretty much rule out what isn't wrong to actually find out what is wrong. Mark's taking a vaginal swab from Lulu as one of the common causes of miscarriage in bitches is the herpes virus. The sample will be sent to the lab to rule out viral or bacterial infection as the cause of Lulu's infertility. It could be a long journey, um, and it may just be nature's way of saying she's not going to have babies. OK. Right. Has nature dealt a cruel hand to Lulu, or will she and Julian be able to have puppies? Moog is a four-year-old rescue cat whose owner Jody has endured a stinker of a problem ever since he got her three and a half years ago. Problem with Moog is that she has a bit of an issue with flatulence. She she farts quite a bit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's quite quite strong. <laughs> <laughs> she tends to do it as well at inappropriate moments when maybe I've got people round or even r r last thing at night, so you're just about to go to bed, off goes the light and then suddenly the whole room is filled with gas. I can feel it it's a fart that you haven't smelled before. It's eggy, it's pretty putrid really, it's, it's not a healthy smell. Me and a girl were lying on the sofa watching a movie and the tail will be nicely up in the air and all bushy and waggling around and then she'll drop the smell. I right by with my tail in the air. 
And so I was in this sort of slightly awkward situation where she genuinely thought that I had done the most horrendous fart. Will Vet Mark be able to get to the bottom of Moog's problem? Coming up, Lulu the Baron Bull Mastiff gets checked into a canine fertility clinic. Good girl. Good girl. And we sort out more awkward animal issues in our problem gallery.